Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and early, 7 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, today I want to talk about uh, the people around me, uh, messages I get on Facebook, even, even my family. Uh, people that are concerned because of everything that's happened in this last year. I'll talk about that in a second. Most of the people that watch my channel know, know what I'm talking about. But uh, I have had people that have actually just come out and told me they're worried about me. Uh, hinted that, you know, they're worried about me relapsing. As most of you know, I'm, uh, on October 23rd of this year, I will have 15 years completely clean and sober. And this year, I'm going to talk about the things that, you know, I had the loss of my best friend and ex-girlfriend on uh, a little over a month ago. Uh, I lost my home. Uh, I, I was told that I had, I knew the house was going to be sold. And, uh, but I was just told on one day that I had about 20, 21 days to get all my stuff and get out and find somewhere else to live, uh, that the place had been sold. They're not even legal. Uh, I was without a home until this place was ready for about a month. My family took me in. Uh, it all started back. Well, I'll get to that in a second. So I've been hesitant to talk about this because this is, and I'll tell you why. Because in the back of my head, in my heart, I, I know that a run of bad luck or a, a run of change, when they go on a lot of things, you know, I, I, it's not bad luck. I just, you know, it's, it's, it's change when, when change occur, occurs in your life. And in the back of my head, I know that there's no rule book. You know, I told you guys before, I hate you'll never hear me say life isn't fair. You know, there's no rule book. You know, there's nothing to say that there won't be even bigger challenges to come today, tomorrow, next week. So I've been hesitant to talk about this because I, you know, I don't know how I'll react tomorrow or next week. Never assume anything. Okay. So people, you know, express their concern. You know, are you okay, Daryl? You know, because I think because the perception is that a lot of times, uh, Recovering addicts or recovering alcoholics relapse, you know, when faced with um, change or tough circumstances. One of the things in reading during my recovery, I read that one of the hardest things, one of the last hurdles for a recovering addict to overcome is when they're hit with multiple tough situations all at one time. You know, not just one, but a, a multiple ones. Uh, that's one of the things that takes the longest to, to, for a recovering addict to, to learn how to deal with. Okay, I was watching MASH last night, and Hawkeye talked about, ah, I need a drink. And I started thinking about that, and it reminded me about, you know, my friends and family. Honestly, you know, with 15 years under my belt, I know in my heart that, that drinking or using would just make my life that much worse. You know, I, you know it, does, it, it honestly doesn't occur to me. So when I saw this on MASH, I started thinking about that, you know, and, and do, do us recovering addicts or alcoholics really believe that this will uh, soften the blow of, you know, this, these, these bad occurrences, you know, say you crash your car, so you go out and have a bunch of drinks, you know, will that make you feel better? We all know that's not going to make you feel better. We all know that the buzz that you get that night is just going to be worse. It's going to be a, you know, you're just going to dwell on what happened. This is what I think, this is why I think people, the more time you have in recovery, the more time you get solid in your, you know, in your belief in yourself. Uh, so, you know, if I only had three months, six months, nine months, there's a chance that I would relapse. And this is why, this is what I, th I thought about. It's not because I, I think it would make, it, it would be an escape for the night. It's just about pity. That's really all. In my heart, I would know that I'm still going to think about it all night. And it's probably going to give me, you know, I'm going to be an ugly drunk. It's just about pity. It just, it, it's, it's the addiction or the alcohol, alcoholism talking, that, that part of you talking and giving you uh, an excuse Poor me, look what happened to me. Nobody will blame me if I use or I drink. That's what it's about. That's what it's really about. It's not about escapism or any of that. Okay, let me talk about one of the first things that happened, happened this year was back in February, 
with this channel, I lost my monetization. I had been getting every every day when I I would go to I go to Google and I check off for my advertising. Uh, you know, if there's anything what's contained in my video, if there's any swearing, uh, you know, what what kind of advertising I want, pop-ups, skippable, non-skippable, and uh, I had been getting congratulatory notes and little fireworks saying, "Good job, Daryl." You know, because I was getting it right every time. And then all of a sudden one day, my advertising was gone. So, you know, I wasn't conforming with their rules. That I was putting out dangerous ideas or something like that. Okay, so this was about around February 4th. I, I haven't told you guys. I haven't really talked about this. But I got my monetization back. Sure enough. You know, the people that remember this will remember my reaction to this. Uh, you know... During that time, there was a lot of talk from politicians about cancel culture and, you know, how, how it's not fair. You know, YouTube's blocking me, YouTube's doing this, or, you know, these people are stopping me. And, and even comments I got, you know, people, I got comments saying, you know, I think it's because of this guy here. This guy says he, you know, that he complained about you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there was always that urge in the back of my head. To say, you know, look, you know, it's look, they're canceling me too. It's not just the Republicans, but that's not how I reacted. Um, like I told you guys when it happened, it's a done. You know, it, it it is what it is. And when it happened, I remember telling you guys, I'm just going to use this. You know, I'm going to find the good in this, the positive in this, and that that's all. That's been my reaction. That's what keeps me from using the excuse to use or drink, to find the positive in things like this that happen. I remember telling you guys in the video when this initially happened that, geez, I hope, you know, I hope it comes back. I'm going to have a positive attitude, you know, and, I, and it, it, good things did come out of that. Uh, I spent a lot more time focusing on my artwork and my art sales because I didn't have the income from YouTube, and good things did happen. Um... And in the back of my head, I was always hoping, I was like, geez, you know, because I'm telling all my viewers that in my heart, I believe fairness, you know, this is going to work out and fairness will work out. In the back of my heart, in the back of my head, I was like, geez, I hope it does. And it did. Uh, just a month or two ago, YouTube had done the investigation or whatever. They reviewed my channel and they turned it back on. They realized that they made a mistake or for whatever reason, it was wrong. And they turned it back on. And not only did they turn it back on. But they actually uh, paid me for the money that was due me when they shut me off. Because I remember talking to you guys about that too. They, so they, they made good on everything. And that's the power of positive thinking. Um, when that happened, I remember talking about, you know, having a positive attitude, looking for the making lemons out of lem or making lemonade out of lemons. And I remember mentioning, well, even if somebody dies, in the back of my head, I thought about that. I was like, Daryl, you shouldn't say that. Because usually when you say that, it happens. And it did. Uh, like I said, I lost Audrey last month. And it, it still hurts every day. Um, and to be honest with you guys, you know, I, I don't know what good or what positive thing will, will come out of this. I don't see it right now. I, you know, I, I wish to God it didn't happen. So I'm still working through this. Um, when I lost my place, I had this, you know, a great place that I loved and I became homeless. I now have this place. And this is one of the good things that happened with me getting this place. It's, they're about the same two bedrooms. You know, they're both, uh, you know, in condition and everything. They're about the same. But one of the good things that's happened about me living here now, the change, is that I was a lot more isolated in that other place. It was more out in the woods, and I would spend a lot of time on the deck and by myself. It was a more uh, urban, uh, suburban, suburban, isolated setting. With this setting already, I'm almost forced to socialize a lot more. My paintings have gotten so much more every day. Uh, there's an area here where they've actually asked me that if, that, if I want to display my artwork. So every day I'm getting questions, inquiries about sales and my artwork, which I never got before. Uh, I'm meeting new people. 
women uh, that I would have never met before. Sing, you know, single people, and I'm making it's making me more. It's forcing me to be more outgoing because I think in my heart I'm introvert. So these are positive things. You know, you always have to look for the positive. There, it doesn't do any good to cry and complain. Poor me, it's because of this, or blame it, or it's not fair. You know, and I truly believe this. This brings me to what I want to talk about next. Donald Trump. I started thinking about this. If it were me, if, if, uh, if, if, I, I, if I were him, and I thought that the election was, you know, or the election was stolen, that my presidency was stolen from me, and I thought about that, and honestly, I can honestly say this, if I were him, I would have moved on. You know, I would have just used this time to move on and, and go on to move on to other ventures in my life. Use the time to, you know, just be done with it. And if there was fraud or whatever, then in my heart, I know I would be vindicated and I would get, you know, get it back. Um, I can't imagine spending what, seven months complaining and crying every single day and then actually wanting my job back. Like I said, I would have just used it as God, as the universe telling me it's time to move on, you know, and move on to something else. And this is something that makes, you know, that makes me, I, I, you know, much people like me and people like Donald Trump much different. It's about having a positive attitude and just letting go and, and moving with the universe and the, the, the hand you've been dealt. Um, then there's the people that say, well, he wants to, you know, he was good for the country. And, you know, that's what he wants. He wants to, to get the country back on track. Whatever happened to the term limits? I know presidents have two terms and all that. But still, if it were me, if I were Donald Trump, I'd say, mate, well, this is just the universe. This is God, the universe telling me it, it's time for somebody else. There's a reason, you know, that Biden won. I do believe he won, of course. I just, like I'm saying, I can't imagine complaining and whining daily, you know, that I was wrong, that it was stolen from me. You know, I, I can't, it's, it's the negativity that just surrounds that and the people that feed into it, even if it's true, even if it's true, I would just walk, I would walk away from it, you know, and if it was meant to be, if it, if it was true, you'd be vindicated. And that's what I believe in my heart. Let go and let God, as they say. I know, I'm getting corny now. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about those things. Um, I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a great Sunday.